I'm Randy Robinson, jumping in here a little bit late, but it's going to be worth it because this is a time of stress. And if you're not stressed during a pandemic, then uh, you're going to be stressed some other time in life. So anxiety is just one of those, it's one of those things that creeps in. The question is, what do we do with it? And when it starts to take hold, anxiety can really start to do a lot of destruction. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And to do that, I'm not going to talk about it because frankly, I'm not qualified. Uh, and just to be honest with you, it's not an area that I struggle with. I tend to have one of those personalities that just goes with the flow or, you know, I don't let things get to me. But I, 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 I recognize that that is not the way that everyone is, that anxiety is real. So I don't want to deny that. I want to address that and, and I want to really help you. So. We've got a pastor online with us right now live. His name is David Chadwick. He's from Moments of Hope Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. And he's actually on his, he's, it's his anniversary. So he's on vacation, but he's taking time out of his vacation. And his wife has been gracious enough to, to let him share with you today. I also want to mention that he is not just a pastor. He has training. So he has graduate degrees in psychology. He's got uh, MDiv and a D men and I don't even know what that is. Suffice to say, he is qualified. He is trained. So, if this is an area that you're struggling with, um, I got the help you need. I got a qualified person <laughs> with me to talk about this. David Chadwick, thank you for taking time out of your anniversary to be with us. Yeah, well, thank you, Randy. You now know why I married such a special wife who would say, "Oh, go ahead and do the interview on our anniversary." That's fine with me. <laughs> well, I, I I don't know. What, that probably wouldn't have happened on the first five years. But how many has this been for you? This is our forty-second. Congratulations! Great. Thank you. Well, let's get to the topic, and uh, you've got a new book out called "Moving Beyond Anxiety," and I like the subtitle because it says twelve practical strategies to renew your mind. Are you suggesting that anxiety starts in the mind? I thought it had just, it was controlled strictly by our circumstances. No, Randy, I believe with all of my heart from my clinical training in psychology and also my training in Bible and theology that to put it in very simplistic language, you are what you think. You know, garbage in, garbage out. You know, and what comes into your mind causes you to feel what you feel and then what you feel causes you to behave. Um, in fancy psychological language, it's called cognitive therapy. It means uh, as you think, you feel, and then you behave. And if you wanna change your behavior, you don't try to change your feelings, you try to change what you're thinking. Hmm. So this is not just my idea, it's psychological training, but it's all throughout the scripture. Uh, the apostle Paul said in Romans 12 too, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Uh, he said, set your mind on things that are above. He said in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, you know, we lift ourselves against all the lofty arguments that try to beset us by taking every thought captive. And that word taking thought captive means actually to spear a thought that gets into your mind and usher it out and replace it with thoughts that are good and honorable and just. Again, in Philippians 4, 8, Paul said, with all of those things, think on these things. So I, I really do believe you are what you think. As you change your thought life, you will change your feelings and then change your behavior. That can be easier said than done, especially, I mean, what we've, we've been through and some people are still going through in some level uh, or they, they're still feeling the loss of a job, maybe even the loss of a loved one through the, the whole COVID, coronavirus, you know, pandemic thing. Um, how is that not denying the reality of what's going on around us by saying, just change your thoughts and you'll be okay. And you know, how, how do we really manage both the, the reality of a situation, which is not good uh, and which is stressful versus, you know, uh, using the scripture or psychology or our own will to just try to deal with the anxiety? Well, it's a great question, Randy. I, I think we don't deny what goes on around us. We don't deny the reality of this pandemic. I mean, we have to realize what's going on. What's that great phrase from 
Alcoholics Anonymous that before anybody can ever get well, they say admitting the feelings, the beginning of healing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true. You admit what's going on. You don't deny it. That's bad health for your brain. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, then you've got to ask the question, well, how do we begin to deal with what's going on around us? And I think if you want to, again, boil it down to its most simplistic place, you look at life either through the lenses of the problem or you look at life through the lenses of faith and believe that the one whom you trust is in control of everything. Those thoughts you let into your mind, whether they are being anchored in CNN or Fox News or whatever blog or book you're reading, are going to cause you to focus your mind on the problem or the possibility. And I know it's hard. I don't deny the hardness of it. But on the other hand, it's a spiritual discipline and disciplines are hard. But we must learn the spiritual discipline of focusing our mind on things that are healthy, things that give life, things that give us hope, and not the things which lead to despair. I had a, such a great point, and you know what? You mentioned uh, some news channels. I, I honestly believe that if someone's struggling with, with anxiety because of external situations, uh, just turning off the news can can do wonders because they, they heightened they heighten the, the problems and they focus on the negative um, the garbage in garbage out what, what are some practical things that you look at that that put good things in so that good things come out yeah you know that old headline says if it bleeds it leads and that's what people focus on. So uh, no matter which news outlet you're looking at, they're going to focus on a story that captures your attention and causes you to feel badly so you'll stay tuned to the channel. I really think you can fast from watching that stuff for a season. Uh, you can fast from all social media. You know, one of the things I bring out in my book is that uh, when you look constantly at your social media, Twitter or Instagram or whatever account you have, only one of two negative emotions are going to come up and both of them are bad. You're going to practice the snare to compare and you're either going to feel better than somebody else or you're going to feel envious of somebody. And both of those feelings <clears throat> are destructive. So I would say, and one of the chapters in the book is entitled Fast. I and mean, it's not just fasting from food. It's fasting from things that cause your mind to start dwelling on the negative. And again, I would say, turn off your television, turn off your social media for a season and start reading things that are positive, not only the scripture, but just encouraging stories about people who've gone through tough times and how they've experienced hope and life and blessing accordingly. You know, again, you are what you think. What you put in your mind is going to cause you what you feel. So if you're feeling all of these anxious feelings, you know, anxiety within itself is not a sin. Anxiety is caused largely by unbelief. Well, that's the sin. Focus your mind on the God who sits on the throne, who really does control everything. And what I've had to do in my own life when I've gone through anxiety is truly ask myself the question, do you believe God's on his throne? Do you believe he's in control of this? And I've had to do some wrestling matches with the Lord to decide, yeah, I really do believe that. No, I, I want to ask you about that because I think this is a very personal issue for you, um, and I'd like to hear more about it. We're talking to David Chadwick, who is the author of this book, Moving Beyond Anxiety, which is uh, it out April 2020. It, is it out today, or are we waiting a few more days for yeah, this? Yeah, it's, it's out now, okay. Randy. It came out April 21st. Oh, this is May. I don't know what month I'm living in. Okay, the book, the book is out right now from David Chadwick, uh, pastor uh, and a gentleman with a counseling psychology degree. So he know, he knows what he's talking about, not just from a scriptural standpoint, but from uh, an educational standpoint. But David, I want to ask you, you you touched on you having to do some of the things that you put into the book. Tell me a little bit about it, your story. Is this a personal issue for you? Well, I don't know which one you want to talk about, but you know what? If you live on this side of eternity, you're going to go through tough times. Mm. We live in a broken world, in broken bodies, among broken people, and we're going to get hurt, and there are going to be times when things seem absolutely out of control. And I'll mention a couple for me. You know, one is uh, in my late 20s, I was in a house one time just having a restful moment, and robbers broke in and I was there alone and they tied me up and held me at gunpoint for Jeez. 45 minutes, poking the gun consistently in the side of my head and telling me that I was gonna be a dead man. 
So you can only imagine what I experienced then and in the PTSD, the post-trauma and stress syndrome that I had to go through afterwards in dealing with that. And, and through that experience, first of all, I had to really come to grips with, do I believe there's an afterlife? Do I believe that my afterlife is secure in Jesus? Do I really believe I'm gonna live forever? You know, you come to grips with that quickly when you got somebody poking a gun at your head and telling you you're gonna die. Yeah. But then thereafter, I had to really come to grips with, well, if this happens again, can I make it through it? So I found myself really trusting my faith like never before through that experience. And really, I came out on the other side of it after the healing occurred with a deeper, richer, more meaningful faith and an absolute commitment that I do believe in the gift of eternal life through Jesus. Hmm. The second one was my mama died of Alzheimer's, but not with just the normal eight to nine year uh, degradation, but a 17 year experience. Hmm. Our doctors told us that that was a most unusual length of time. So I, I slowly but surely watched this woman I love so much shrivel and die away. I, I can remember the day about five years before she died when she knew no one. When when you knocked on the door of her head, she did not recognize you, and especially her last born son whom she loved so dearly, me. And you know, that was very traumatic. Well, I had to come to grips again with living in a broken world. Do I believe that God is on his throne? Do I believe God's in this some way? And that God even used it for my mom's good, but certainly for my good as I learned to care for other people. Kind of a second Corinthians one four where Paul said, the comfort you've received from God with that which you go through, use that to help other people going through that same kind of pain. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have a deeper, richer, more significant compassion for other people because of that. And those are just two examples of many others that I've had to walk through. But I mean, the bottom line again is, do I believe my Lord is with me, that he is in me, he walks over and before me in all my circumstances and allows me to have the strength I need to keep moving forward. And Randy, bottom line is yes. Mm -hmm. in, each, in each one of those, I learned how to focus my mind on faith and not the pain of the problem. And that faith gave me the energy I needed to keep moving forward. Yeah, I, and losing a loved one is something that we all have to deal with at some point. Uh, and it's, it's never easy. Um, but I, I really, actually, as awful as it was, I don't like the fact that, that burglars broke in, but I like the, the mental picture of you minding your own business, everything's good, you've done nothing wrong, and some outside force comes in and threatens you because I think that's a lot of times where the anxiety comes in because it's like, I mean, I, I could be doing everything right and something come in and break in something evil, something bad, something that I had n no control over, nothing to do with, and and threaten your life, right? You know, and and a lot of times I know the, the with some people the, the pandemic felt that way. It's like, man, I had no control over this. This thing just came in and swept away, took away my job, took away my security, just ramped up my fear. Um, I'm curious after that experience for you, did you? talk to somebody about that? Of course I did. And I had to go through some stress and trauma counseling just to deal with that. And that was very helpful for me. And I would tell any of your viewers, listeners, that if they're going through a deep sense of anxiety or trauma, there's nothing wrong with talking to people, getting the help that you need in order to move forward. But you know... Oh. No, we don't. Nobody's going to come there, back. There I us. am. Oh, there you are. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you, get, you were saying get uh, talk to somebody who, who can help you, and then you said, but you know, and that's where we completely lost you. I'm, I'm still here. I'm going to make sure that thing doesn't happen again. Okay. We're talking to David Chadwick, author of a book called Moving Beyond Anxiety, and this is a good time. It's always a good time to talk about anxiety because, you know, there's always a circumstance that, that is stressful, and so we're Here getting I am. a little help. I'm back All with right. you, Randy. All right, so we're talking Thank about you. talking. One of the important things to people that should know is that it's it's good to talk to somebody, and if talking to a friend or, or pastor still doesn't suffice, I think it's good to talk to a, a counselor, a Christian counselor. Yeah, they do help in ways we can't begin to realize, and, and what they really do is to help us get in touch with our feelings those feelings of despair, anxiety, hurt. And the other thing that I have realized through this is not only is it good to talk to somebody, especially a trained therapist, but it's also really, really helpful to realize I don't control a whole lot. 
<laughs> you alluded to it. We, we don't control much of anything on this side of eternity. You know, those robbers who broke into my home that night, I never thought that would happen, but it did. It was one of my life experiences. I never thought I would walk through a global pandemic, but it's happened. We're doing so right now. And the truth is we don't control a whole lot. And that's why, again, the essence of faith is going to the one who does control everything. Though we can't see him, we have every trust. He is in control of everything. And Randy, I don't know of any other source of comfort that will allow us to move through life's uncontrollable circumstances than that faith perspective. Mm, yeah. Uh, you know, an interesting thing I've noticed with some friends of mine online on social media is during this the, the stressful time for them and for everybody, some of them started posting photos of things like sunsets, and I thought, okay, well, that's nice. But then I, I look at your book, and you've got your strategies, and you talk about focus on faith, pray, things we expect. Um, but then you say, consider creation. How can creation help us with anxiety? Yeah, it's interesting. I didn't come up with the idea Jesus did. <laughs> in, in Matthew 6, 25, he adjures his followers not to be anxious about anything. But then what he does is he invites all of his followers to consider creation. He literally says, look at, first of all, the birds in the air. And he says, if God will take care of them in every possible detail, how much more will he you the crown of his creation? And then he says, secondly, look at or consider uh, the lilies in the field and how they're clothed with a splendor that's greater than Solomon's itself. And if God cares for them in such great detail, again, the question, how much more will he care for you, the crown of his creation? So Jesus is the one who said one of the ways to defeat anxiety is to consider creation. When you look at how everything fits together so beautifully, Randy, in the created order, when you look at the color of the skies, when you look at the sun, the moon, and the stars, you know, when you look at the beach where you may go or the mountains that are so majestic, look around you at all the beauty that is there. When you see that God controls all of that perfectly and uh, supplies every need for everything in his created order, again, the question is, will he not do so for you? who are the crown of his creation, his children. And notice that Jesus does two things. He calls God a heavenly father. So what daddy would not care for his kids? And then secondly, he chides his disciples a bit and says, oh, you of little faith. He mm -hmm. says, increase your faith. And one of the ways you can increase your faith is by looking at creation and seeing the creator who cares, especially for his children, humanity, the crown of his creation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you at the beach right now? Yeah, I am indeed. That's our anniversary place. <laughs> I'm looking outside at the waves lapping upon the shore and how each one comes with a perfect rhythm. God's the one who did that. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people love the beach. My wife's a beach person. I'm a mountains guy, but I get it. And, and I love I love just the, the peace that it does bring from just getting away from the noise of humanity. Uh, tough question for you. And I'm going to take you maybe a little bit off, off script. Um, as a pastor for all these years, decades, uh, you no doubt have counseled people who um, were struggling with anxiety, fear, stress, and I'm, as a, I'm, I'm going to make an assumption that there have been some whom, for whom it did not end well, however that looks. When you look back on those the situations where it just breaks your heart. What was it that those people didn't hear, didn't heed, that uh, kind of put them on a path of destruction? What can we learn from maybe the negative examples? Randy, you're asking some great questions. <laughs> so thank you as an interviewer. This, these are great questions. You know, interestingly, I decided to write the book a year and a half ago before the pandemic. And the reason was because I had studied that anxiety was the major issues adult faced. And secondly, it was the major reason for teen suicides. Hmm. I would guess it's right up there with a major reason for suicides as well. And I think uh, for those people through the years where I counseled them and gave just the common sense advice that I'm giving your viewers, listeners right now, and then I saw them take their life hmm. or I saw them fall into a deep pit and never get out. I think the one thing I wish that maybe I had emphasized stronger 
is to say to them, there's always hope. Please believe there's always hope. Don't let your momentary feelings let you make a decision that is for eternity and for all of those who remain behind suffering from your particular decision. My daddy used to say, Randy, all the time, if the sun comes up in the morning, there's always hope. And the sun kind came up this morning. It, it comes up every morning. So therefore there's a new day and the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They're new every morning. Uh, my dad also taught me that his favorite Bible verse was, and it came to pass. Mm. You know, this will pass. And I wish I could have emphasized the hope and the reality that it will pass because there comes a point where you realize, okay, there's a spark of hope and I can make it through the day. Therefore I can make it through the next day. And then people won't make the traumatic decisions that they make. Mm. Wow. No, what a, what a great, what a great level of insight. Uh, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm going to pitch it back to you one last time for anything else that you want to say to people um, before we're out of here, because frankly, I have, <laughs> I am, uh, we're doing the broadcast show today. And so I, I've got to get to some other interviews. Sorry, but uh, I do appreciate your time. And I know you're on your anniversary, so I'm gonna let you go too. But um, any, is there anything else that, that you want to say related to the, the topic or just in general to people right now? Well, I think one more thing I'd love to add is you mentioned the value of a Christian therapist, and I wanted to reiterate that. But I also would reiterate, hey, one of the chapters in the book, Be Moving Beyond Anxiety, is on um, have good teammates and make sure you're surrounding yourself with folks in life who will encourage you, give you hope, and give you blessing. Make sure that those people are giving you words of life, not words of despair. And, mm. and here's the bottom line, Randy. If you've got friends who are dragging you down, feeding you anxious thoughts, get new friends. <laughs> Make sure you surround yourself with teammates who will help encourage you to walk through this life in a positive way. Yeah, and uh, I, I would maybe suggest that it doesn't necessarily mean you have to dump those friends because you might need to minister to them, but just get additional friends so that you're not always being pulled in a negative way. Because uh, I, I think, in my view, and I think you would, would agree that the just the idea of our why we're here on Earth is is to help those people who need help. Of course, if we're the ones needing help, we should get help. So we need to get help so we can give help. But uh, I, I appreciate just all your insight. Uh, again, David Chadwick, author of the book Moving Beyond Anxiety, live from the beach on his uh, anniversary celebration. Thanks for being <laughs> with us. We appreciate your insight and appreciate you encouraging us today. Well, thank you, Randy, for the privilege of being on your show. And I hope my words have helped even one person move beyond anxiety. I, I have no doubt, and it's worth it. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us today. If you know somebody that's struggling, especially during this time, um, just share this or reach out or get David's book. Um, because I know there are some people who are genuinely having a hard time right now. Uh, and, and don't, man, don't regret later. I, I speak from personal experience of having lost friends who have taken their own lives. Um, don't think, mm, ah, maybe I shouldn't, maybe it's too personal. Reach out. Reach out, say something. Um, sometimes that's all it takes is just to to step into their darkness with a little bit of light. And uh, you are that light as a believer. You are that light. We are God's light in, in a dark world. So let's, uh, let's be that. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. I've got great interviews lined up for this week. And uh, we will encourage you every single day. So if you have not subscribed or followed whatever channel you're watching, please do that now. And you can always check us out on Light Source. Make sure you get their app. They got a great app. You can watch Life Today Live on that uh, every day and watch the past interviews. Uh, and just encourage yourself, grow, and uh, let's do this thing together. We will get through. There is hope. We'll see you again next time on Life Today Live. <laughs>